Y'all probably need to stand and stretch a little bit now. Stretch a little bit. Get your blood circulating, flowing. And while you're standing, let's stand in honor. Receive the man of God all the way from Frankfort, Kentucky, the capital of the great state of Kentucky. Pastor Dr. Philip Derber. Come on, give God a great hand tonight. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Hallelujah. Woo! That, that, that was some fine dining right there. That, that wasn't no fast food. I could have sat under that all night. Praise God. You may be seated. Oh, my, my, my. I'm excited about hearing the rest of that. Woo-wee. Glory to God. Good to be with you all again. Praise God. It's just, you're my second favorite place to preach. Don't, don't get upset with that because... Uh, I'm th- I'm talking about my gang back home who's watching. Praise the Lord. And by the way, uh, when your pastor comes to Kentucky, <sighs> out of the park. Serious. Come on now. So, uh, you know, the world has it saying you don't know what you have until it's gone uh you you need to really know what you have don't let go of it because you'll be glad you stayed with it and who you stayed with amen yeah uh tuesday night as i was uh Closing out praise and worship in uh, Frankfurt there. I just intended to get up and uh, exhort the people on using the heavenly gift of tongues to praise and worship the Lord. Because you run out of English words. I mean, you just do. I mean, you can only say you're beautiful. I praise you. I glorify you. I magnify you. And, and you run out of words. But you don't never run out of more. Amen. And so I was just in that place. And I opened up my mouth. And I began to prophesy. Uh, a lot of times, I know prophecy. I've been prophesying for 25 years. I know when it comes on me. I know when the tongue, when uh, uh, the gift of tongues and interpretation comes on me. I know when prophecy comes on me. I've been in this a while. That one caught me off guard. And uh, all I was going to do was talk to the people. Now, don't get me wrong. I see these people that say, uh, "Well, it just come out me, Pastor," and it was it was a crazy prophecy. You know what I'm saying? We know the Bible says that the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. But you can get in a place of yieldedness. You can get in a place of surrender where uh, God can overwhelm you to get something accomplished. And Tuesday night, I uh, opened my mouth wide. <laughs> And he filled it. And uh, I'm not one, you know, just to have people hear prophecies and so on and so forth. But I really felt unction today to get my secretary to email it to me. And then uh, emailed it to your media department to hear what the Lord said. You'd be surprised how closely connected the church in Frankfurt and this church is. I mean, they, they, they've been there. Uh, uh, th- they'll tell you, you guys are on a level of uh, understanding that very few churches operate in. Very few. 
I go around. I, 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 I know a lot that's out there. And uh, I sat right over there. I didn't have to pick through nothing. I didn't have to sit there and say, well, you know, that was close, but. No, I could sit back there with no guard up, just basking in it, because it's just unadulterated truth coming at you <coughs> that will set you free in an accelerated fashion. And so we we didn't get together and say, all right, you, you say this and I'll say that. Hey, come on, you, 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 sat, you sat on this man uh, enough to know uh, his integrity. And I've been here enough times to know that you, you ought to know that I don't play. Right? And so uh, now that I heard what he ministered on, I've, Alberta, my wife, leaned over to me and she said, he's preaching what you prophesied Tuesday night. And so I want, I want to share that with you before we get in. Can I do that? Uh, uh, you all got that back there, right? There is a place of rest, says the Lord, that remains for my people. A place that I've chosen. A place that I've determined. I've given you of my spirit, says God. Let my spirit lead you into those places that I've predetermined for you to rest and to be strengthened by my presence by my counsel, by my comfort. Learn by my spirit how to use what I've freely given to you to rest in. I've given you life. I've given you newness. I've given you voice, utterance, to where you can leave all that tries to press in, all that tries to cause unrest, all that would try to throw you and get you off course. I have freely given to you, if you would use the gifts I've given to you, I've given you eternal life, I've given you my spirit, I've given you a heavenly language. I've given you a place where you can come and worship me at my feet unhindered so that I can direct you, I can strengthen you, I can show you things to come. For this is the hour of great unrest in the earth. But my people shall have rest like they've never known before. In the midst of the weakening of the nations, my people will rise up in strength, rise up and soar with wings as eagles, and fly over all the unrest that is causing those around them to fall and crash. But I will send strength into my people, that will cause them to rise up from weariness and overcome every obstacle that would try to trouble their rest. So use what I've given you, says God, and as you do, my spirit will remain not only in you, but upon you, says the Lord. Somebody shout unto God in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hmm. Man, I feel the anointing on that just reading that thing. You need to take that to heart. <laughs> Woo! Glory, glory, glory. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right and that's what we're doing we're laboring to enter into that rest we're working this word so with that in mind I want you to go to Hebrews chapter 11 God has got 
great rest for his people. Well, it, 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 see, when you don't know nobody on the planet, nothing, you can rest. I remember when I tried to lay down and MasterCard and Visa and American Express were all singing three-part harmony from the other room. Thousands of dollars. Don't get mad at this. Follow this. Don't get mad at this. My visa bill. I have a visa card. I could take all of you around the world and back. We're not. <laughs> Somebody says is that part of the prophecy. Eh? <laughs> My visa bill for this month, and this was a low one. Don't get mad at this. Follow this was right at $7,000. See, some of you just choked right there. Some of y'all just choked right there. Now, I ain't talking about anything else. I'm just talking about, you know, just extracurricular living. You see, some of you, some of you got mad, see? Don't get mad at that. Follow that. Because I just wrote the check. You understand what I'm saying? I just wrote the check. See, some of us, I just got to, I got to set the tone here. We ain't paid a dime of interest. Over 15, 16 years now, I guess. Not a dime of interest. $7,000. Just on, just on. Buying, doing, whatever. So I, 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 I'm not saying this to brag. I'm, sit, I'm saying it to set the tone. Because every now and then you got to hear something that makes you kind of like. So that you understand who's talking to you. <laughs> yeah. Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now, the fa now, faith is the substance of things. Of things. Now, faith is the substance of things. Hope for the evidence of things not seen. Of things is talked about twice. In this famous word of faith verse, it's talking about things. A lot of times when uh, we minister about prosperity, the fault finders, the persecutors, the skeptics attack us because they think all you after is things. We just heard from Pastor Jonathan, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto us. And the Father knoweth that you have need of these. So when you beg in God, God, I, I, I need, he already know that. He already know that. He already, he, know, he already knows all that and did something about that. But it takes a faith connection to bring these things out of the spirit realm into the physical realm. Come on now. God's looking for some worldly dropouts. You know what a dropout is? You, you, you didn't finish. You didn't finish it. Dropped out. Say, say, you know, back, back, back where I'm from, I, I'm back, you know, we, 
Kentucky country folk, you know. And there are a whole lot of dropouts. In other words, they're they working on their daddy's farm. And, you know, after they get, they, after they, you know, they go through junior high, you know, they get to go through that. And then they, then, then, they, then they get thinking, man, I make more money on the farm. I don't need all this. I don't need it. I know how to read a little bit, write a little bit. I know how to subtract and add. And they just drop out. They dropped out because they realized they didn't need what somebody else said they needed. I'm looking for some worldly dropouts. <laughs> ah, come on. And so when, when we're talking about things here, God knows that you and I need things to operate in. I can almost assure that across the board in here, there is something that if you had in your life right now, if you were to go home right now and it was in your driveway, or in your house, or in your bank account, in your living room, in your bedroom, in your garage, in your whatever, right? Your life would be bettered by it. Things, when they're prioritized right, better your life. Better your life. There's a freedom that comes. <laughs> There's a rest. A freedom that comes. But don't get mad at this. Follow this. From things. Now, I ain't talking about free from sin. I'm not talking about free. I'm just talking about free from pressure. Things. Instead of wiring that muffler up. Getting you, getting you, getting you, getting you some pop cans and fixing the exhaust. Come on now. All that mess. You're getting one, you start it up, and don't even know if it's running or not. Can't hear the thing. That other thing, man, she's going. Everything is shaking. Have to take the foot off the gas, you know, in the neighborhood. Just try to wake the whole block up. Here they come. <laughs> Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> now, faith is a substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So without faith, I ain't got I ain't gonna have no thing. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God, and how shall they hear without a preacher? So some some somebody gotta be preaching faith. Somebody gotta be preaching that you need to be a dropout from that world system. And get enrolled in God's system. You're here in school tonight. I like preaching the Thursday night crowd. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, 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 you hear, you hear. I mean, you had, you had, you had to move things around. You, you had to, you had to, you had to, you had to do something. It took a little effort for a Thursday night crowd. And I'm here to tell you, God ain't going to disappoint you. You're, the investment is going to pay back rich dividends. That's right. You all host us so well every time we come. And we're, we're, we're in the hotel, you know, and they got this big convention going on, you know, and it's, it's, it's all about how to make money and all this stuff, you know, and just I'm looking at all these 
all these uh, Babylonian <laughs> students. And I'm 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 thinking myself, and I and I, I I can I can read them like a book. I told Alberta, I said I I, I could I could tell you this one what that, that I could tell. You. I, and uh, Pastor Jonathan uh, texted me and said, "Hey, I'll be here in just a few minutes." So we went down in the lobby, and there's this uh, lady. She had her material that she got in her conference, and 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 the material was your power day. Your power day. My goodness. See, money is power. It is. It's not the power. It's not almighty God. It's the almighty dollar versus the almighty God. There's no comparison. But it is power. Oh, yeah, 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 you got money, you got power to a degree, right? And they're teaching them your power day. But I, I know what they teach. They teach you need to be assertive, you need to be positive, you need to, be, you need to uh, capture the room when you walk in, you need to uh, not take no for an answer. You, 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 it's all you, 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 you. Right? But with God... It's all God, 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 God in you, 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 you. Right? So uh, Hebrews 11 talks about there's a realm out there that we cannot see that contains things. It contains things. You know, I told you about fishing. You know, when you go fishing, you, you, you got evidence because you've seen somebody else pull one out. So there you are, you, 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 you went and made a, an investment. Got you a pole, paid for it. Even got you a license. Got you some bait. Because what you saw somebody else get. What you heard somebody else say. And then you went and did just what they said to do. And sure enough, you pulled something out of there. Same thing in the realm of spirit. But you need somebody that's pulled some things out. That's why I say I'm just setting the tone. So you understand, you know, we 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 pulling some things out. Right? Okay. Now look at this in the amplified version uh, of the Bible. Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of things we hope for. Being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. So out of that, we get this. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. Now faith is the confirmation of things hoped for. Now watch this. Now faith is the title deed of things we hope for. Now when you read the Amplified, it's not a paraphrase. The Message Bible is a paraphrase. In other words, when, when uh, Peterson was doing the Message Bible, he just got, you know, he, he read the, what King James said, I assume, the King James or other translation, and then he just put his words to describe what he thought that was saying. That's a paraphrase. Amplified is it, not that. Amplified, Hebrew and Greek scholars came together, and they went beyond Strong's concordance. They went beyond the Vines expository. They went beyond these uh, helps that uh, you and I commonly uh, are used to, and they dug deep into the Hebrew, deep into the Greek meaning to pull out the, and amplify what it actually said. So we're, we're not reading a paraphrase. This is what the Greek, in, in New Testament Greek, this is what the Greek actually says. And the Greek 
And I'm pulling this part out. The Greek says, now faith is the title deed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I can see by your enthusiasm that maybe you don't know what a title deed is. So let me give you the definition of that. A document that is the evidence of one's legal right. To property. <laughs> oh, my, 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 my. The title deed. Now, see, when you have the title deed to something, can't nobody take it from you. Man, I got a whole drawer full of title deeds in my house. Whole drawer full of them. Just whole section, all these title deeds. Ain't got no lean on it. And there's some. I see you brothers with that lean on. There's a reason why you got that lean on. Because there's a lean on that vehicle. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Title deeds. When you have the title deed, then can't nobody mess with it. You can do with it what you want. There's a reason why when you get a loan that they hold on to the title. Because you don't own it. You don't own it. You can go, you can go and wash that thing, wax that thing, drive that thing up in front of your family reunion and say, look at my car. And you ain't got no title. See, back home, back home where I'm from, uh, I was raised in the era of muscle cars. In 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 the in in the 60s and 70s and uh you know uh we had this quarter mile strip no i ain't i ain't talking about a race strip i'm talking about out on country road i'm telling y'all y'all at the race strip y'all i'm talking about out in the country and you know you'd be riding you'd be riding through town my buddy had a had a Mark Donahue special edition javelin, and uh, it come it come from the factory. It, that thing would fly. It was a 390 positive positive traction, four barrel, uh, and don't let 390 fool you. This thing would scoot, and it had the spoilers and the hood scoop. It come from the factory that way. And any, you might not even know who Mark Donahue is, but uh, <laughs> he was, he was a famous, you know, and and so. Uh, Baby blue, four speed, first competition plus shifter. And, uh, you know, we're riding through town, and another guy that we knew, you know how you, well, you all don't, might not do that down here, but back in the day, we'd pull into a, a a parking lot, you know, after, like, say, the gas station closed down, and, you know, we'd sit there, and, you know, we'd just, uh, just sit in our cars, you know, and just, oh, okay, okay, yeah, isn't it, and, you know, you know. and so here, here, here comes this, here come this guy with his 442, goat, you know what a goat is, GTO, and we got a little something going on in there. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> he running his mouth. And, well, yeah, what's that thing going to do? 
And I look at my buddy and said, you going to let him talk to you like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, get on. He hollered back, you want to run title for title? Now, see, back in back back in those days, you, you, you didn't get no loan. You worked hard, get them vehicles, and then once you got that vehicle, that's all you did is work on that vehicle. Title for title. In other words, whoever wins this thing, you got to give that title over to the other. Now, you know, we had these under, under, uh, unspoken truths that you know okay if I win I know I ain't gonna get your car but it's gonna cost you a new set of tires on mine because you wouldn't run title for title you know what I'm saying and we gonna go out to the strip see you out there you back them cars up you somebody stand right in the middle quarter mile Title for title. Come on. And whew, man, I'm telling you them things would scream. Right? Well, uh titles they show possession. Now watch this. We put titles on everything. Pastor Jonathan, and put a title to his message. You know, I, 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 I've been writing books. I've been pumping out some books. Got almost uh, 40 books written now. And uh, there's a couple being edited right now. Just got one back from the printing press uh, two days ago. Uh, but I put a title on him so that when somebody looks at it and reads that title, it lets them know the content. In other words, if, 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 you, if you're uh, walking through something in your life in the area of healing, right, then uh, you probably don't want to look and read the rapture book. So to save you a whole lot of time of buying a book and saying, man, this won't say nothing about healing. I put a title on it so you can just move right on past that and find you shall recover. The title, come on, the title lets you know the content. Well, the world's after all kinds of titles out there. You know, they, they, they want letters in front of their name and after their name. Everyone looking for a title. Everyone looking for, you know, if I can only get this title, if I can only achieve that title, then I'll, 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 be, I'll be something. But, you know, you can get a title and not and not produce the content. You know what I'm saying? And so faith is the title deed to things. And when you have the title deed, can't nobody take it from you. But it's an unseen title deed. You don't you, you can't you can't pull out actual paperwork and show it for the car you're believing God for. As far as, you know, a legal document from the courthouse or for your house or for whatever. But we have this document that I want to I show you something tonight about Title D. All right. Go with me now to uh, oh, <laughs> oh my yeah we'll just go there John 19 Yee -yee. don't you love the word 
$7,000 on his visa. Just setting the tone. There's a lifestyle out there for you and I. Come on. In John chapter 19, let's put our eyes on verse 19. And Pilate wrote a what? <laughs> and what did he do with it? Oh, 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 he put it where? Now, the preaching of the cross is foolishness to them that don't believe. But unto us that believe. Got any believers in here? It is the power of God. Now, everything that Jesus did has significance. Everything. Everything. You know, when, when, when they took his robe uh, from him, remember that? And they, you know, that, 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 was, that was his uh, robe of, uh, his robe being taken so we could have the robe of righteousness. The crown rammed on his forehead, representing the curse around his, around his mind, will and emotions. Come on now. So that we could be crowned in the glory of God. Be free. All these things is, is, is Jesus became something he never was. So that we could become something we never were. He became sin that we become righteous. He became poor that we become rich. Come on. He became a curse so that we'd be blessed. Everything that he took on the cross y'all might as well go ahead and shout before I even say all this <laughs> there was a title and the Bible tells us it was put on the cross now watch this and the title was Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Now watch this. This title then read many of the Jews. For the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city. And it was written in Old Testament and New Testament and Catholic. <laughs> uh, it was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Those were the three prominent languages that would cover everyone that would ever pass by there. Now watch this, 21. Then said the chief priest, shows you my level. Right? But still, when he walks in, I'm like this. On the inside. I'm standing like this. With her, <laughs> but on the inside, I'm like. So he comes in there, and the instructor uh, introduces. And, and so he starts with the brown belts. And he is whooping these brown belts like they ain't never knew anything. And these brown belts, were they, they're, they're, they're on the verge of being black belts. I mean, they, they, they some... They some they some sharp dudes. This is this wasn't where you pay enough money and you, they give you a belt, like it is these days. You know, you know to where everybody's black belt these days. Everybody, yeah, hey, I, I got my black belt. Uh, you know, but uh, he, he, I mean, he's there's probably about 25, 30 of us in this class, and he's just going through one right after the other. Now, if you've ever sparred before, uh, one round. Uh, three rounds, five rounds, it takes a lot out of you. 
he's he's going one right after another after another after another after another i'm thinking to myself my goodness and so it comes my turn you sure you want to hear this <laughs> i went out there Man, he done kicked me upside my head. <laughs> now, you got to understand, I come off the street. <laughs> you don't hit me upside the head and at least not know I was there. I'm going to bite, scratch, <laughs> kick, swing, hit, spit, cuss. I'm going to get something in there. I went berserk. Windmill, you know. And I'm running into him, and all I can feel is my head going back like this. And the instructor said, stop! <laughs> he was standing up on the podium. He said, Philip, come here! I went and got in front of him. He said, I didn't teach you that! And watch this. He said, I'd rather you get whooped in here and learn how to fight in here than learn how not to and and you know he was saying i can't let this go to where you go out there and not know how to defend yourself and what well i mean he chewed me and now i'm mad not only am i hurting <laughs> i'm embarrassed that hurt worse than my head hurt because this guy was smacking he ain't pulling no punch he's smacking I mean, he ain't got no pads on. He ain't none of that going on. We're talking pow. Your head snapping. Pow. Oh, there's too much in the flesh. We better just quit that right there. You want to come tomorrow night? And, and Oh, you want to hear the rest of that? So he chews, he chews me out in front of the whole class, and I said, okay, all right. With your bam, bam self. Now, I don't know if he was just tired or what. But I got in front of him, and he threw a sidekick. And I grabbed it right here. And when I grabbed it, I went, bam! I didn't know Bam Bam didn't have no cup on. <laughs> My instructor jumped up and said, yes! <laughs> he loved it. Bam Bam didn't think so. He beat me all over that mat. <laughs> Out of that entire class, I was the only one that got a hit in on Bam Bam. That was my claim to fame. All them cotters, all that stuff when there wasn't nobody there, didn't do, didn't, didn't do me a bit of good. <laughs> Come on now. See, you can shout in here all you want to. But Pastor Jonathan and Pastor Kim, they're teaching you how to handle it out there. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beats the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. In other words, I tell everybody else how to do it, but I ain't got nothing going on. There's all kinds of Christians like that. Echoes. They just, oh, you, you, you know what Pastor Jonathan said? Now go on and do that. Well, they, 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 they'd, they'd have a tendency to believe you if you were doing it too. Come on now. Come on now. Now I'm closing right here. I know I've gone long, but bless God. 
some title deeds are going to come forth in here. Y'all need the title deed of this property right here. Come on. This year. Now, uh, listen, listen. When it's good, I'm saying you're going to train for it. If, if you, if, 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 I'm just saying what we're doing, you know, you, you, your man of God will instruct you on in that. But what I am saying is you are entitled by the king of kings. Now, faith is the title deed of things hoped for. Did you get anything out of that? Give God praise. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. 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 Well, praise God, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we're training for the title. That's right. We're training for the title. And I, I think it would be uh, uh, silly of us not to join in. Because uh, 40 days of consecrating ourselves, setting ourselves aside, training, it, it always pays off. It always pays off. So we, we can join in on Monday. That's not a problem at all. Amen? Well, we got a good start tonight.